Hello world, I just wanted to give a quick video on some tips and tricks that I have found while making oscilloscope art like in these snippets here. Before I begin, I want to give a quick shout out to three different people. The first person I want to shout out is Lee's Favorite. Lee's Favorite is one of the most talented musicians in the scene right now, and her page is one of the first places where I saw oscilloscope art in a little snippet where she shouted out Tracy Breaks, and she is the queen of snippets. I will go ahead and link that snippet below, and I will link her SoundCloud as well, and you can go ahead and check her out. And the second person that I want to shout out is Hop Art, aka Charlotte. She makes much, much cooler oscilloscope art than me, and I wouldn't have started making oscilloscope art in the first place if it wasn't for her and Lee's favorite. She's super cracked with this kind of stuff, and she does it in a much more generative way that I want to explore in the future, and you should definitely go check her page out as well. I'll have her music and her Twitter linked below, as well as a snippet to go check out some of her oscilloscope art. It's super amazing. And last, but of course not least, I need to give a huge shout out and a thank you to James H. Ball. James James Ball is a student at Imperial College London who studies AI and machine learning. He's the creator of Aussie Render. In their words, Aussie Render is a synthesizer for making music by drawing objects, text, and images on an oscilloscope using audio output. So basically, it allows you to record audio that you can put into any DAW and it'll output different images into an oscilloscope. This tutorial will not be focusing on Blender or OBJs or that aspect of Aussie Render, but I will be making a separate tutorial later on to try to cover that. But for now, we'll just be talking about SVG images and texts, and this tutorial will largely work the same for both. Go ahead and head to the Aussie Render link below, and then head to the release page here. And if you're on Windows like me, just go ahead and download the EXE. Warning before you open up Aussie Render, it will have some loud audio, but it's going to use that audio to generate the image so that audio is necessary. One thing you can do to get around this is type in sound settings in your search bar or just go into your control panel into sound settings. Just turn down the volume for Aussie Render and it will still be able to render the audio, but you won't hear it yourself. Let me show you what it would sound like if I didn't. And we don't need to hear that because it will still be able to generate an image. And we can tell if we go up to window open software oscillator. Now, this is what we're seeing based on the audio image, right? It starts by default with a cube. And right away, you can start to see what some of these effects do. But basically what James has done here, which is super incredible, has given us a system to interact and control with whatever text, OBJ, or even animations from Blender that we want to, and to output them in audio form that any other oscilloscope can recognize. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you specifically how to use automations to make your images or text react to certain aspects of your beat, or how to make it so that the only thing that the oscilloscope sees is the image or the text rather than the whole beat itself by bypassing the beat signal. And it's relatively easy to do in whatever DAW you're working with, but I'll be working inside of FL Studio. Like I said, for this tutorial, we'll just be working with text or image. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new text file here. We're just gonna type in hello, create file. And the reason we named it hello is because by default, if you click edit file, it is already gonna have hello in there for you. And we can just change that to whatever your name is. I'll put Petro you should be able to see whatever you typed inside of this window. And you should be able to begin to interact with it with these different audio effects. All this kind of stuff is pretty basic and straightforward and James Ball's tutorial should have kind of guided you here. But what we want to get more specific with is the routing of our signals to kind of see how we can make this interact differently with different parts of our beat or whatever audio we're trying to show off, if that makes sense. And I'll explain that more as we hop into a DAW here in a second. I'll be hopping into FL Studio, but you can use whatever DAW you want. And I'll show it both in Wave Candy inside of FL and in Mini Meters, which is a program that I like to use because it has an awesome oscilloscope and also an awesome spectrogram. Before we head into the DAW, we need to record the audio. And they made that super easy to do. First, you wanna go into your audio settings here, make sure you have the correct things selected. For me, I'll be using my Focusrite USB audio. By default, the hotkey is Control R to start recording, but I'm not gonna start recording yet. What we're gonna do is enable 3D perspective and rotate it on the Z axis. So let's leave it at zero, but then we'll put sine wave. 
then you want to take this number down super duper low like point two maybe zero point two now we have a usable text image and then you kind of want to move it back in space using the 3d distance and i'm going to slow it down just a little more something like this you just want to click control r and it should say recording down here in the bottom left and then after you watch it rotate at least one or two times you click Control r again and it will ask you where to save it and we're going to go ahead and just save it into documents for now just because and we'll name this petro and then we're going to go ahead and hop into the daw and handle it from there let me go ahead and put that petro clip into the joe boy clip from before and we can see what that would look like <music> In this particular example, every time the 808 hits, the oscilloscope text becomes more and more clear. And then as the 808 fades away, so does the image. And as well, there's a counter effect where every time the hi-hats and snares hit, it takes away from the oscilloscope image and breaks it up a little bit more. And I can show you guys how to accomplish that. So let's imagine for a second, you just wanted that image clip we just generated spinning in a circle to play by itself without any other audio from the song. The easiest way to do that would be to make sure that the only signal that wave candy or mini meter is receiving is the signal that's directly from Aussie render or the audio you just created. And there's a bunch of easy ways you could do that. The easiest way that I can imagine would be to just send it to a mixer track. And then on that mixer track, you add your wave candy and your mini meter because all they're going to react to is that track and nothing else. So if nothing else is being sent to it, then right off the bat, you should have just your image, even though the beat's playing. And this next step is why I think that least favorite and B-Hop do it better than I do, because they don't hide their signal. And I don't always hide my signal. I also automate it as well, which you will see in this particular tutorial. But what we're gonna do next is we're gonna unroute this track from the master and from any other track. If you're on FL, make sure you have a vector scope on Wave Candy. Otherwise, look at the stereo meter inside of mini meter. But basically what you will see is because this isn't being sent to the master, you're not hearing any of the audio, but because you have mini meter and Wave Candy on this track, you are still seeing the image we generated. <laughs> And that's cool and all, but why even do that when you can just screen record Aussie Render? Because we're not even interacting with the signal in any way. We're just visualizing it at that point, right? Which is totally fine. But let's go ahead and try and implement it in a way that's a lot more unique and actually interacts with the beat, like in the snippet. First step, just like before, put mini meter or wave candy on whatever track you want on the mixer track. And we're going to name this oscilloscope art. Remember that any signal that passes through here is going to affect your oscilloscope. Make a second track and name it Aussie, and then route the audio that we just created inside of Aussie Render to that track, and then make sure that that track is route to this track only to the oscilloscope art. And for now, make sure that the oscilloscope art is not being sent to the master. That way, when we play this oscilloscope audio here, we see it but it's not being sent to the master. You're not hearing anything. It's just these two interacting right now. Now, the secret to getting the Aussie render signal to interact with the beat is using a fruity balance and a fruity peak controller. We'll just be using fruity balance to control the signal, how much of the signal is being sent. And then we'll be using peak controller attached to whatever instrument you want or whatever part of the beat you want. And that's how we'll be able to automate how much of the signal is being sent. In this example, I'll be having it react with the 808. So I'll put the peak controller on the 808. And then what we're gonna do is go into the peak controller. We don't need an LFO right now. The LFO is irrelevant. We're just gonna be using the peak. You wanna turn the volume all the way up, the bass all the way down, and you can leave the decay in the middle. Then you wanna go on into fruity balance, link to controller and link it to the peak controller. And what that allows is every time that the 808 hits, it allows your signal to flow through. Now if we add the rest of the beat back into the oscilloscope, we'll have a much more natural looking signal and our pattern will hit every single time the 808 hits. 
but we're gonna have a problem where the beat's gonna clash every time the 808 hits. So the easiest way to fix that is another Fruity Peak controller and another Fruity Balance. You're gonna wanna make another mixer track and I named this one pre Aussie Signal. And basically this is where the rest of the beat is being sent. So I took the rest of the beat and I routed it only to this track. And then I put a Fruity Balance on that track and then I put a Fruity Peak controller at the end of my Aussie signal so that every single time the Aussie signal gets sent, it also cuts the beat off and turns the signal off from the beat so that they don't interflict with each other. So to break that down easier, every single time the 808 hits, the Aussie render also hits and the rest of the beat signal also cuts off. And none of this actually interacts with the audio. It only interacts with the signal that the oscilloscope is seeing. <laughs> And basically there's infinite possibilities on in what you could do with this because you could put a fruity peak controller on anything. You could put it on an 808, a kick, a hi-hat, a clap, or any instrument or melody or a specific part of the beat. And you can have that signal interact with the Aussie render signal in any way you want. It doesn't just have to be fruity balance to stop the signal from coming in. It can be fruity reverb to expand the signal. It can be distortion and bit crush to adjust the signal. It can be all sorts of different things to mess with the signal in any way that you want and to respond to the beat in any way you want. And overall, there's really just so many different things that you can do with oscilloscope art. And I'm super excited that I've gotten into it. I hope this tutorial helped you guys at all. I feel like this was a lot of information and I'm super bad at explaining it. So if it didn't help, I'm super sorry, but I'll be making a tutorial soon on how to use Blender and how to connect Aussie Render and Blender and then send those images into FL Studio or any other DAW. Once again, thank you guys so much for listening. So much love. I hope this helped and peace.